Everything we model at Line 6, we like to own because we come back to reference it. So we had all these nice vintage amps and modern boutique amps, and we needed a place to put them, so they made this kind of amp locker or amp showcase. It's this clear glass wall that is locked, and inside of there are just literally a stack of some of the coolest vintage amps and boutique amps and weird things that they've gotten along the way that we need to hold on to, but we also kind of want to show them off. There's a number of old Marshalls with those weird logo plates. Like, it's more of a history piece than a, than a musical instrument because it's, I don't think anyone who owns one of those would actually take it out and play it in the world because they're too valuable. Some tweed fenders that still have the two-prong plugs. If you played these in the world, you'd put a three-prong plug on because that's how you have a safe amp. But we don't really want to do that, we don't have to, so we had to invent ways to safely ground the amp with a second power cable. We have a Gibson amp from 1939. I think that might be our oldest one. It has a field coil speaker, which is a totally different way of having a musical instrument speaker. And it just sounds great. It's super gnarly, very chewy. We have some vintage Vox amplifiers before they started using top boots from like 1960 and before that it just feels like when you play them, they're right on their limits. And they just feel like alive under your fingertips. When I started working at Line 6, one of my jobs was to keep all these amps healthy. Vintage amps, you need to turn them on every so often to run power through and make sure nothing blows up. It's like, a, like an old car or something. Once a week, I'd pull an old amp out and turn it on, make sure everything worked and nothing blew up. Occasionally, I'd have to check a, a model. So I'd pull a vintage amp out, and I'd check it against the model and make sure everything was running correctly. When I was a kid, I wanted to either be a scientist or a musician. And I have this job now where I get to be a scientist about musicians, about the things that musicians interact with and touch. So I get to dig into gear, figure out why things sound and behave, figure out why players like the way things sound and why certain guitars and amps work well. And it's just, it's just a fantastic way to spend the day.